Hey, hey, fifth insight, last one for the week. We're going to go to Genesis 27 and just talk about the deception because the question is from the Come Find Me manual, this beautiful thing, because that's where I get my lesson from, this book. Um, was Rebecca and Jacob wrong to deceive Isaac this way? Were they wrong? And was Rebecca trying to do the Lord's work before the Lord could? Like, was she? Um, and again, remember, there is so much that we do not know the story. So when you go to Genesis 27, you can read that the blessing, like the, the way it went through and how she encouraged Jacob to deceive his father, Isaac, who's now obviously blind or very um, hard of hearing and sight. You know, you can, you know, easily deceive those people if you know how. Um, and how he did that, and, and they went through how they made Jacob hairier, so he was more like Esau, and to get that birthright blessing, because whether she was trying, because the Lord had already said to her that Jacob needed to have it, but was she trying to do the Lord's work before the Lord could take care of that? And like I said in the earlier insight, Esau maybe was going to give this up anyway, quite happily, and he didn't get to do that, so maybe that's why he was so annoyed. Um... We really don't know. There's a lot we don't know. So we're going to look at what we can do to work with the Lord rather than lag behind and don't do anything because that causes issues or run ahead and do more and muck it up. All right. Um, so the blessing, the birthright blessings given in verses 27 through 29 and then in 38 through 40, the same blessings given to Esau, as I said in the earlier insight, other than the birthright part, which was the extra portion, which is only to look after, you know, the, the, the wives and the family and, and any, like, extra things. Like, we would talk about now, you know, the car needing new tyres, or it's that emergency fund that's for those kind of things. So that's the only reason the birthright is different. In this case, otherwise they got exactly the same blessing. So there was blessings for both of them. Esau was still super annoyed. And you read at the end of 27 how um, Jacob had to be sent away because uh, in 45, um, it, you know, it said like until their brother's anger turn away from me because Esau was really, really pissed. Mm, very annoyed. Um, and I think, you know, if I had been in Esau's position and my dad was passing away that I loved and he sent me out to get our favorite meal that we could enjoy together and when I came back I found out that this deception that I had been deceived by my mother and my twin brother, I'd be pretty damn annoyed too. So keep that in mind, Esau's not a bad person. And this story comes around again and these brothers come back together and there's more to it, right? So hold fire on judgments. Don't do that because there's a lot we don't know. Um, but we can learn that th from this record is in that it's incomplete. That's the first thing we can learn. That when we read these things, the record is incomplete. There's more to it. Um, and second, that actions have consequences that are often unpleasant. Uh, we also learned that what was once basically traded as a younger person was now grieved over, so Esau not getting the birthright. So he traded that as a younger person. Again, value your blessings. Um, because maybe he wanted it now. We don't know. So this week was really about, again, the whole story. It's about valuing our blessings and working to increase our Christ-like attributes. Learning to be guided by prayer. Learning to like become and be better. That's what it's trying to teach us. Um, so to wrap this all up and keep it short, because it's the last one for the week and we're all tired, I bet. Um, Alder Uchtdorf, he said, Gratitude is a catalyst to all Christ-like attributes. A thankful heart is the parent of all virtues. So if you're wanting to be more virtuous, if you want to have more of these things, what's the first thing you can do? Is have gratitude. Be thankful for what you have. As little as it may be, or as unimpressive as it might be, be thankful for what you have. And it's all going to be different for us. But we've got to find value in what we already have. Like as I said, we need to find value in the blessings that haven't come yet. Hold value for that. Don't dismiss them or disrespect them. Or think they're not going to come. And get angry about it. And, and have that, you know. Like, have that relationship with Christ. That's the catalyst 
to all Christ-like attributes is gratitude. Have that first. Um, and that these guys didn't always do that. And they needed to do that more. Do we see Isaac not stepping up so much? We do. But we don't know if he didn't. Do we see Rebecca running ahead with the plan when the Lord probably had a better one? Perhaps. Do we see Jacob being kind of a mama's boy? We do. But is that a bad thing? We don't know. Do we see Esau as being the older bully brother that is just a bit unrefined? Perhaps. We don't know. So keep this all in mind. When you're reading through this, hold the judgment on the characters because you don't actually know them. And there's a lot of things that get said in Sunday school and blah, blah, this and blah, blah, that. And it's like, actually, you know, you really don't know. So learn what we can from it, which is that to start with gratitude, to increase our Christ-like attributes, to be more like Rebecca was. But remember that Rebecca also made mistakes. She could have done better too. Like we can all do better. Um, and that's why I gave that quote earlier from Howard W. Hunter about that we've got to serve Christ more valiantly than we serve him. And that I love that it came from a prophet because it showed that even he thought he could do better. So even our prophet will say to you, I can do better um, at becoming. They're not done yet either. Um, they're also imperfect humans, although they're pretty awesome people, but they're also imperfect humans. So we're all growing and becoming and trying to gain these things. So that's kind of what I took from this week. That is what I took from this week. I hope it inspired and uplifted you, and thank you for joining me again. Um, again, I haven't even looked at next week's lesson because just life, right? Um, but I'm sure it's going to be awesome. I think it encompasses quite a few chapters, so get reading early and um, talks about oh, all sorts of awesome things. The way what happens to Jacob, it sort of follows Jacob for a little bit. And how he goes and gets his wife and has to work for seven years to get the sister before he can get the woman he's in love with. 14 years before he can get the woman he's in love with. I'll tell you, that's commitment. So look forward to that and what we can learn from that. And I'll see you there. Be safe out there. Love you guys. See ya.